This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Chad Daybell, his trial is well underway, and we have seen some explosive testimony thus far and very interesting video that has never been seen before by the public anyway. Going back to when the police were raiding his home and finding the bodies of J.J. and Tylee in the backyard, and he's in his car, and he's sitting there talking to his daughter, maybe not his car, patrol car, and telling his daughter, who is crying and upset, wondering what is going on, I'm not coming back. Those are the words that he said. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. I mean, that really shows a lot of consciousness of guilt right there. And I think it almost starts to answer our question that we've wondered for quite some time. Just how invested is Chad Daybell into the whole delusional cult thing? Is it the same way Lori was? I'm kind of thinking not. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, he does not present as psychotic. Lori does, mm -hmm. you know, and and was determined that by an you know professional evaluation when she was uh, arrested that you know she's got a delusional disorder. She's crazy. Yes. Um Chad presents as more strategic mm -hmm. and manipulative and clearly he is grounded in reality. He knew that, okay, the, the jig is up here. I'm not coming back. So I agree with you. It looks pretty damning. That's an interesting thing. Cause then you start to wonder about the dynamic of the relationship. If, you know, Lori is, you know, crazy, which she, you know, has, I mean, that's the, like the, the flippant term for it, but obviously yeah. has a delusional disorder. Um, yeah. why why did Chad keep going along with it if, if he's grounded more in reality he would certainly know killing children is a bad idea uh, and she's out there but why why would why would one keep going to that extreme if you're not completely invested in the idea that these kids are are demons if you will right right yeah I I, I can only speculate but my guess is that you know, you can be incredibly narcissistic, which colors the way you look at life and it colors your decision making, but you're not delusional. So mm -hmm. officially, those kind of personality disorders, they're not mental illness per se. It's its more just it's your personality. It's how you developed. So he's clearly off. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's a strategic thinker, but he doesn't impress me as terribly bright. And so I think he got away with a lot of manipulation over the years. He was making money by exploiting magical thinking religious people, and he just became increasingly bold. So I think we can look at the the narcissism with him, which, of course, Lori also is narcissistic. And so that was the synergy when you put the two of them together that they just amplified each other and did these horrendous things is it kind of if you look back at his life kind of someone who is kind of aloof kind of a loser kind of a loner off by himself and and that that glory if you will that he started getting um from not his former wife i don't know what the relationship was there obviously she ended up dead um but the fact that he had Lori that was buying into this stuff and then Melanie and all the friends and Zulema and yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that it kind of was a, a, a 180, if you will, from where he was in life to suddenly, oh my gosh, this, this attention that I'm getting, this validation that I'm getting that the world for the most part has never seen in me is now there. Is it was that, if you were to look at it, it obviously we're just speculating being the the very strong factor that would enable someone to go down yeah. such a dark path and justify it in their mind because it's so it feels so good and he's yeah. willing to basically do anything to keep that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was getting an elevated mood from all the attention and and it increasingly impaired his judgment. And I, I think you nailed it. The the more attention he got, the more he was looked at as this this, you know, quasi prophet character with this special pipeline to you know, God and the angels, um, he got very full of himself and increasingly stupid and careless. I, I wonder, and obviously we're just still speculating on all this. Uh, do you think he still buys this stuff? Do you think he still, do you think he ever bought his stuff? Honestly, the, the, the stories that he would tell uh, these people, then they believed it. 
what was it ever a reality in his mind or just the means to get the the attention that he so desperately wanted he may have convinced himself of some of it to some degree but my guess is he you know if we put it on a 1 to 10 scale he was maybe a 6 or a 7 mm-hmm. with how much he could convince himself that it was it was real or legit whereas Lori went all the way to a 10 with it yeah. you know she was completely convinced that this is reality and still probably believes it my guess is at this point he's shifted his perspective want to listen ad free Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.